is a different Eastern Conference post LeBron. Are the Celtics the best team in the East? Yes. I think they're the best team in the East. I think uh, of course by, he's gonna by say a long that. shot. Not not because I'm a homer. <laughs> no, no. No, I just I just think that they've got so many like players that they can put out unique um, uh, lineups on the floor. They can put a bunch of guys six, seven across the board. Mm -hmm. They switch a lot of stuff. Their defense is fantastic. They got gritty athletes, and that's the biggest thing about them. A lot of teams have athletes. These guys have gritty athletes. They'll come up and they get India. They're not afraid to challenge you. I, I, I really like the makeup. I think Danny has done a tremendous job of getting the right type of players that can play in Brad Stevens' system. But they, I, they are a fun team to watch. All right, I'll put the same question to the non-Celtic. On the table, I, I, I would have to say uh, yes. I mean, when you when you look at their talent, when you look at their experience, uh, what they've done uh, with their coaching staff, the game planning, and everything else. I mean, all the pieces fit. Uh, you know, Toronto adding uh, Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. You know, they they could get out to a good start and sure. possibly challenge Boston for the best record in the East. Agreed. But I think Boston has the best talent. Hard not to like this team from top to bottom with Hayward and Irving back in the lineup now. Gordon Hayward's season was just a disaster. I mean, uh, injured and done for the year on opening night. He's back. Irving, who missed basically the last month of the season and the postseason, he's back as well after the knee problems, the infections as well. So now it, Brad Stevens has one of these what we call good problems. Is that he has an abundance of talent and, and maybe a limit on minutes and rotation spots as well. How does he manage the minutes, the available shots, and all that goes with that? Can he be a good salesman? Can, can he sell his team on making sacrifices for each other for the greater good to win a basketball game every single night? Because every player now wants more minutes and more shots. Yep. And now you bring in... When you bring Hayward back and you bring Kyrie Irving back, there's going to be less touches and less shots for Tatum and Brown, who were used to getting a lot of touches and a lot of shots. Right. You had Rozier, who had the ball in his hands a lot. You know, so now all of that is going to change. And, you know, some of the, the players that were playing heavy minutes, mm -hmm. now can they get the same amount of work done with less minutes? That's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, and Stevens has got to really fight the urge to make a substitution when you have two bad plays in a row because he has yeah. a lot of people on that bench. Right. It's easy as a coach to sit there and think, I'm putting in Rozier. You know, Irving turned it over a couple of times. Or, you know, I'm getting Hayward out. I'm putting in Jalen Brown, whatever. You've got to let those guys play through a few mistakes. And to me, he's got to come down with who he wants to close with. There's 48 minutes in the game, but most games come down to the last three or four minutes of the game. And as a player, you want to be on the floor those last three or four minutes of the yeah. game. So it's going to be a lot of competition to see who's going to close games for that team and what's their best closing lineup. That usually takes care of itself, but Brad has got to be very disciplined. And I'm just going to, if I'm, I'm trying to get these guys enough minutes and not just after a couple of bad plays, just going to the bench and getting guys yeah. out because nothing hurts guys' confidence more than you, you, you miss a shot and throw the ball away. Next thing you know, you're sitting by yeah. the coach, yeah. you're like, Dang, yeah. I got no rope out here. Yeah. So he's, he's, you know, he's got to give those guys a little bit of rope. But I, I, I think that he can have some very unique lineups. And he, he can put a lot of different uh, players together in different combinations. Should give him a ton of flexibility to play uh, big, big, small, quick, slow. I, just, I, I like, I like way, the way they're built. What, what about the conversation that Zeke alluded to with the young guys in particular, Tatum, perhaps Brown, in terms of Gordon Hayward's minutes. I mean, he has a, a 10 figure contract. He's not not playing right for the right. Boston Celtics moving forward. What is that chat like? Well, that, that you know, right now, if you're Tatum and Brown, you're saying I'm looking forward to this training camp coming out because I'm going to show Coach Stevens that I need to be on that floor. There's a lot of internal competition, which I don't think there's anything wrong with internal competition. I'd love two guys come in. Let's find out today mm -hmm. who's better. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I may get the better of Zeke today, but tomorrow he's like, all right. And there's the, it makes you better. So I think those guys are going to compete for minutes. There's no question. But here's the thing. Can you just put winning above all that competition yeah. and stuff like that? If you do that, all that internal competition helps your team. If you allow that to bother you, and you allow that to make you more selfish, or I'm going to go get mine, then that hurts the team. But I like the fact that you got Hayward, Brown, and Tatum. Those three guys can flat out play. Right. All three of those guys are like starting three men in this league. And, yeah. you know, the competition is going to be fun to watch. 
And when, and when you have players like that in that type of competition, you have to really coach against friends and family, right? Because yeah. friends and family are going to be in those players' ears saying, hey, you should be playing more. You should be scoring more. I can't believe, I can't believe he didn't have you in at the end of the game. Yeah. Right. So coach is going to have to coach against the outside influences and keep you know, his players together. And that's going to be very, very difficult. And Zeke, you went through it and I went through it too as players. If Vinnie Johnson and Joe Dumars just had a role in, you had to sit on the bench and you had to be like, yeah. hey, man, let's get yeah. going. Um, early in my career, Cedric Maxwell and Larry had a really role in Robert. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. I, and you've got to be unselfish enough to just sit there and say, man, these guys have got it rolling. It'd be stupid for the coach to, to, inter, you know, to, to do anything to interfere with that right now. So you've got to be a little bit selfless. And that's what, that's what you've got to enjoy and, your yeah. teammates, mm -hmm. too. And I think we had, we probably had people after the game calling us saying, I know my brothers would call me and say, just what you said, yeah. hey, man, Vinny had it going tonight. Yes. They didn't call me and say, hey, Junior, you should be playing. Why, why, right. why coach didn't have you in at the end of the game? That's messed up. So, so those type of little things that, that plant seeds in players' heads, mm -hmm. those are the things that are gonna, the Celtics are going to have to guard against. And you had teammates. ML Carr would come up to you after those guys just got off. He'd say, well, young fella, better up your game. Yeah. Those guys are yeah. really playing. And right. you went like, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, next game, man, I tell you what, I got to get off early. I'm going to yeah. go out there. I got to give more effort. I got to give more energy. Because if not, there's such great players just behind you or in front of you. And it is, that competition makes a team great. Or like you said, if, if the family gets involved and everybody gets jealous, it can tear a team down. Hayward's contract, by the way, is nine figures, not ten. The, the NBA salaries haven't quite gotten to the billion dollar <laughs> okay, so, range so, so, just yet. All right. Kyrie Irving said on Media Day he thinks Boston is, quote, the place for me. But until he's locked up long term, the question of his future will linger. He's expected to opt out of the final year of his deal next summer. H how does that frame the upcoming season? You, you, you always want certainty um, when, you, when you're playing for a championship and you have championship moments. And you never want doubt to creep in. And these guys have got to be you know, in step, lock and tune, mentally and physically. And if Kyrie Irving is leaving any doubt that he may leave Boston, then believe it or not, that is going to show up in their play at some point in time. You gotta, you gotta remove all doubt and everybody's gotta be all in for you to really pursue and win a championship. So if that door is cracked just a little bit, at the end of the day, somebody's going to open that door and doubt's going to creep in. And when doubt creeps into a team and you talk about free agency and moving, I mean, what Danny Ainge needs to hear right now is that, hey, I'm a Celtic. I love being here. I want to be here. And this, our future is bright. bright. Then that's going to make Danny and the owner say, you know what? This is all guy. We're going to ride with him. Mm -hmm. But if your main guy is like, you know, waffling a little bit or hedging, that leaves uncertainty and that leaves doubt. And that's and mostly tell, what he's saying, but yes. until it's signed, that door is But I'll tell you one jar. thing. Danny Ainge may be a very good friend of mine. He is one cold-blooded character. <laughs> because I tell you what, if he senses at all that Kyrie's not bought in 100%, now, Terry Rozier showed that he can play basketball last year in the playoffs. Right. He would pull the trigger in a heartbeat and say, hey, look it, I'm not, you know, you're, you don't want to be here for the long term. I'll make a change. Yeah. I'll trade you. And, you know, Danny, Danny's not afraid to trade anybody. He'll pull the trigger in a heartbeat. So I think it's up to Kyrie to really sell it. Like you said, Isaiah Watkins, this is where I want to be. I want to win a championship this year. That's my goal. I have one goal, win a championship this year. They get to the finals and everything works out. You know, they, they have a great future. Why wouldn't you sign there? I think, yeah. I think so. I, I think the only way it doesn't work is that Kyrie sends some signals up of I'm not 100% right. bought in. And that minute that happens, Danny's making a trade, I can tell you that. And at least so far, we have not seen that signal no, from I don't think Kyrie. he will either. I do no. believe he's bought in. Jason Tatum, third in the Rookie of the Year, voting and a revelation in the postseason. All the changes to the Celtics rotation are likely to come simply from help as the Seas re-signed Marcus Smart and Aaron Baines, so the roster looks very similar to last year's. Robert Williams was their first-round pick, a big out of Texas A&M, but it's hard to imagine with this roster he's going to get a ton of minutes in his rookie season. Anything for you missing from that group? Um, no. 
I mean, they, they, they have all the pieces. Uh, they have the, the spirit. You know, now will the two players coming back from injury, will they get back to where they were before they got injured? Mm -hmm. And even if they don't, we see, we see that they still have enough in Tatum and Brown, you know, and Rozier to make up until those two guys get back to peak performance. Yeah, no, I, I love their team and the way they're assembled. Last year, the biggest revelation to me was Tatum's willingness to take big shots at the end of games yeah. and his handle. I didn't know he had all that handle at Duke. They must have hit it. Coach Krzyzewski did a nice job of <laughs> hiding that because this guy's go, you know, coming at you, breaking it down, going right to left, left to right. And so they have the ability, like I say, to have a lot of players close games out. And, and, and in playoff games, you need closers. You need guys that make big plays at right. big times. Kyrie Irving's made big plays his yeah. whole career. You got Tatum. Brown's not afraid of the moment. El Horford makes big shots. And then the thing I like about them the most, they can switch everything on defense. Yeah. And they're just, their ability to switch and keep pressure on you, that's really hard to go against that. Because, you know, all the switching used to, create mismatches yeah, and everything yeah. else. Now, they're not switching. And I mean, you know, you got Marcus Smart coming off the bench, one of the best defenders in the league. He's he can guard, you know, one through five. And yeah, so right. they, they're very, very versatile. And, and when you talk about defense, I, that, that brings me back to Jalen Brown, who I, who I spent a lot of time with this summer. He is one of those guys that wants to take the defensive challenge. Yeah. You know, most players come into this league and they want to establish themselves on the offensive end. He's one of the few young guys that came in and said, I want to establish myself first on the defensive side of the ball. And then the offensive side came in his second year. So I'm looking forward to him having a big year also this year. Well, with the exception of Aaron Baines, who's a true big, big, mm -hmm. and he's a massive human. Yeah. There are a ton of guys on this roster, as you mentioned, who are switchable, who are versatile. How close are the 18-19 Celtics to positionless? Very close. I mean, you know, you can give the ball to Jalen Brown, let him make plays, Tatum make plays, Smart make plays. So you don't, you don't need Kyrie Irving making all the plays or Terry Rozier. So you don't need a point guard doing that. El Hortford really is one of their best perimeter passers in the league. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he, he initiates so much offense from the top of the key, the three-point line. So your center now all of a sudden is playing above the three-point line with great passing skills. So they, they, they can invert their offense. They can, they can do so many different things. Yes, they're, they're very close to position. List, which, which is the way our league is going right now. Sure. Yeah. And, 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 and what that does is that when you talk about positionless basketball and versatility, as Kevin said, that allows you to invert your offense. So now you got your bigs out on the perimeter. And what we call smalls, they're not really small because, you know, all these guys are 6'8", 6'9", 6'8". So when we, when we talk about small ball, and we had a conversation about this last year, Matt, my fear of what's happening into, in the league right now, small ball is not small ball anymore. Small ball is everybody 6'7", 6'8", 6'9", 6'10". You know, so the guys that are 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", better be careful because <laughs> the guys that are 6'11", <laughs> yes. now can do the same thing yep. that I can do as a small guy. Right. So they're calling the small ball. But Kevin Durant is seven foot oh, agreed. playing out on the perimeter. Yeah. Some of those smalls are still pretty tall. Yeah, yeah so it's not Maybe small not the hulking anymore. players yeah. that you yeah. saw back yeah. in your era, yeah. but there's still a lot of length out there on the floor, which that, that makes the switching defensively work as well as it has yeah. around the league. Talk about trending in the right direction. Since a 25-win start to his NBA coaching career, Brad Stevens Celtics have managed to improve their win total four straight years. To keep that trend going, Boston will need to win at least 56 this season, which would make Stevens the fourth coach in NBA history to improve his win total in five straight years. Kristen Ledlow spoke with Coach about the progression. We've had a lot of players um, through here that have given, put in a lot of sweat equity, um, and it's been fun to be a part of the growth of that. Um, to watch guys get better, to watch guys want to compete together. Um, and then we've just been fortunate. You know, I think that it's a hard league to win in. You have to play um, at a great level every night to have a chance to win. And, um, and you know, we've been fortunate to have that. And we'll see if we're, we're good enough to win a few games again. What are you most looking forward to about having a healthy roster to start the season? A healthy Gordon Hayward, a healthy yeah, Kyrie Irving? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm obviously looking forward to it um, for them more so than for us, right? I think that ultimately those guys, you know, it as much fun as they had following our team during the playoffs last year, 
that was really hard to not be able to play. So it's great for them to get a chance to be back. Guys, you know, it as much fun as they had following our team during the playoffs last year, that was really hard to not be able to play. So it's great for them to get a chance to be back out there. And, and we're looking forward to having a full a full set of rosters so that we can, you know, hopefully build off some of the good things we did um, and improve in the areas we need to improve in. He's already recognized as one of the great coaches in the league. What does he do better than most? Um, I just think his, his improvement, just like his team, he's improved from year to year also. You know, you're a forever learner in this game, and he keeps learning and getting better. Many believe Boston will be the uh, number one seed in the East. Last season, the Raptors won the top seed with 59 wins. Will the Celtics win more or fewer than 59 and a half? Ooh. I'm going to go over. I'm going to think they're going to be a 60-win team next year, minimum. 60? Oh, minimum. I thought yeah. you were going to say 60 on the dot. No. I'm going to go 59. Well, so under. Yeah. No, no, fewer. no. Fewer. Right, right, right at, right well, at 59. 59 and a half was the number I gave. Yeah, that- they say good problem to have, right? Well, that's nice, unless you're the coach who has to figure out how to make it all work. That's a difficult task, Zeke, when you look at minutes, opportunities, and the amount of players the Celtics have. Yeah, he, he'll be able to make it work in terms of minutes and opportunity because he has talent. The thing he's going to have to do best is what Chuck Daly did miraculously with us. He's got to manage egos, right? you got to be able to manage everyone's ego and make them sacrifice for team. And I look at Mark Aguirre, in my opinion, should be in the Hall of Fame, okay? Bill Lambeer should be in the Hall of Fame. These were two players that had Hall of Fame careers in front of them. Then we get a Dennis Rodman who starts to develop. He takes minutes away from Mark Aguirre. He takes rebounds away from Bill Lambeer. Bill Lambeer had led the league in rebounding, I think, for three straight years. Then we get Dennis Rodman. Now Dennis Rodman leads the league in rebounding, so Lambeer kind of takes a, a lesser role. We get Mark Aguirre, who's a great offensive player, but Rodman is also a great defender. So Mark Aguirre takes a less of an offensive role, and we become a great basketball team. Now, can those great players that he have can Coach Steve, you know, manage the egos and get them to sacrifice and buy in and take a lesser role to be a better team? You talked about alpha males before. We've got, obviously, Kyrie, who we look at that way. But when you look at usage, I, I feel like we're going to you because you just look the smartest on set. So. <laughs> we got to use it's the glasses. Wait, 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 it's wait, only wait. the glasses. Oh, oh, it's oh, only oh, the glasses. Oh, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He, he said egos. I just wait, wanted to remind wait, everyone. Wait. <laughs> when you look at the usage last year, what stands out about what you saw from Tatum and Brown and maybe now what could be interesting to try and figure out now moving forward? Well, it's interesting. I, I think you... You don't expect, when you look at the numbers, you don't expect Jalen Brown to be as ball dominant as he was the second half of the season, but he really was. And the absence of Hayward and Kyrie enabled Tatum to really flourish in a way that first round picks and rookies typically don't get to do with a very good playoff team. He was carrying that group offensively down the stretch. So now you're introducing a bunch of ball dominance back into the mix. So to the point Isaiah made, not just managing the egos, Managing the touches, managing your offense and how that all works together will be a really interesting challenge because those two young kids have another level or two they can get to. So what happens to their growth and development when these other two pieces get put into the mix? It's, it's really going to be interesting. And, and I think, again, the reason it's going to work in all likelihood is they've got an organizational ethos that is we're bigger than the sum of our parts. From the time Brad got there, they were built on we're going to outwork people, we're going to be about the right things, and we're going to overachieve because of that. So I think one of the most unheralded things that happened for them this summer, in addition to getting healthy, is they got Marcus Spark to re-sign on a team-friendly deal. He is the one who's representative of that identity. He reminds everybody every day, this is what it means to be a Celtic. And I think that makes it a lot easier from a continuity standpoint. Speaking of making it easier, thank you for using ethos to magnify the point. <laughs> uh, let's go to our Dookie here on set. Obviously, Tatum had a great year. I want to ask you about something different about Hayward because coming off of injuries, and I think back to what you talked about at the Hall, there's a lot that goes in mentally you guys would understand that we wouldn't 
beyond even physically. How much can you really simulate, Grant, and how much will we learn about Hayward on the floor once the season really begins? Well, first of all, thank you, Griff, for balancing the intellect on that side of the, <laughs> the table. I appreciate that. Um, I, 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 think, I uh, think I told you well it's played. the glasses. Well it's played. only the glasses. Yes, well thank you. No, um, you know what? I, I think there's when you're coming back from an injury like that, um, you know, you can, you can take two approaches. You can either one, I want to, you know, get back to a level. I want to prove myself. I mm -hmm. want to show that I'm that all-star. Uh, but in this case, you can also take the other way where, you know, I want to just, I, I'm appreciative. I want to come back. I want to work my way. I want to get back to trusting who I am. And the problem is you can go and play in the summer and pick up ball and do all the training, but nothing prepares you for the regular season. I think, Hayward's in a, 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 a wonderful position right now because he doesn't have to carry the load. He doesn't have to come in and justify his contract uh, like he maybe thought this time last year. Now he's just got to come in and play, uh, fit in. Uh, he's not going to probably not want to rock the boat. I think that's his personality. I think he wants to fit in and mesh. He doesn't want to stand out. So I don't anticipate him being a problem, but it is a bigger problem because he is a, an important player. Uh, he has a skill set. Uh, you have a guy in that, that, is, that can help a team, but you have Kyrie Irving coming back. You know, Tatum and Brown were complementary players, you know, f pretty much throughout the entire season until Kyrie stepped down. And in the playoff, they became the go-to guys. And, and these guys, do you, do you hinder their development by having them take a back seat? How do you manage their growth along with Kyrie inserting him back into the mix? I think they'll struggle with that, but because the East is so bad, I think, I think they'll still win games. And you are hopeful that as you go through the season, they'll figure it all out and be at their best in the postseason. Yeah, you know, Zeke, I want to follow. Go ahead. Go I, I want to ask him a, a question about Hayward, just in terms of trusting your body. I mean, you had a very serious injury, you know, and, and he's had one. Like, the confidence that you need to regain in your body and trust in your body, what – Psychologically, how does that affect you? And when do you see him having real trust again? You know, Isaiah, I, I went through what he went through four times. So I missed four seasons. So when I finally got healthy, um, it, was, it took me a year to get back mm. to trusting, really trusting my body. But it's interesting because part of who you are and so part of your you psyche. So when you jumped or when you ran, did you think it was going to go oh, out on you or like you did, just, it, did I it mean, make you more cautious? I, I was probably a little bit more cautious, a little bit more fearful. Um, and, you know, when you're right, when you're healthy, when you're, you know, Isaiah Thomas, mm -hmm. all-star, all-pro, Hall of Famer, you're not thinking about, you know, my ankle or my knee or whatever. You're out there just competing. You have all your weapons. You're going at it. And so that's, that's in the back of your mind, and it's always there, and you always feel it. I mean, I always right. felt it when I, when I did get back. And so I don't know his situation, a different injury than what I had, uh, but it, it, it's a physical recovery, but it's also that mental and emotional recovery, and that takes longer to get that back, and it's mm. different for everybody. But for me, after four seasons, it took me a good part of one, se one year to get back to finally trusting my body again. Grant, when we were in Phoenix together, you, you mentioned that it, the, the way it was difficult for you was in traffic. You were never really as comfortable stretching your leg out, going one-legged and setting your leg in traffic. And I thought it was meaningful that Gordon told Kristen Ledlow, I'm basically 100% except for my one-leg explosion. Yeah. That's a big deal when you're a leg, one-leg jumper. So he's not really 100% right now. We'll talk more about how the kind of seating might work looking ahead. But it's interesting, during your era, you had to, as Ric Flair said, to be the man, you got to beat the man. You would have to do that to get the torch passed. You had to earn it. LeBron left the East, and most people now think it's in the Celtics' hands. They're going to have targets on their back without having won the conference mm -hmm. the year prior, mm -hmm. which is very, very rare. Yeah, it's very rare, and, and you become now the hunted as opposed to being a hunter. And when you become the hunted, but you haven't won the prize, right? You didn't win the ring, so they're not champions, but yet they're going to be treated mm -hmm. like champions right now. Mm -hmm. So everyone is going to mark the Celtics on their schedule. Now Kyrie Irving knows what to expect, but everybody else who's playing on that team and the people who are even coaching that team, they have no idea what they're getting ready to run into this season because everyone is going to give them their best shot every single night. And can they withstand that pressure? Do they have the type of stamina to go through that type of season 
And when they hit a rough spot where they have enough confidence and collective togetherness to stay together and overcome. The champion has traveled that journey, and that's how he got to be champion. But the one who has been handed the torch, the torch and hasn't traveled the journey, he doesn't understand what's getting ready to happen to him. And when the pressure comes and that adversity comes, can that team collectively come together and say, based on experience, this is what we did last year, this is how we got through it. They don't have championship experience. They just have a championship, you know, here it is, you're the champion of the East right now.